Greetings, denizens of the internet! My name is Jason, and I welcome you back to my corner of the internet. Once again, we are going to be kicking things off with some more Space Quest 1, the Serian Encounter. Uh, for some more great stuff from the two guys from Andromeda, be sure to check out TGAKick.com uh, for their brand new Kickstarter. If you happen to uh, get to this video uh, before June 12th. Um, so, uh, let's see, last time we left off, I decided to go... Skimming around, hitting rocks, and getting myself killed just for the sake of it. Um, while I did it intentionally in the last video, I can guarantee you this time here, I'll be doing that a lot unintentionally. It's uh, one of the more difficult parts. But anyways, uh, so we're in this nice place, and I never really examined this area too much. So let's go look around. So... This place is most interesting indeed. A mixture of both old and new technologies. On one side of the chamber is a primitive steam generator. Its pistons, pounding rhythmically, turn steam into useful energy. On the other side is what appears to be a computer console. Ooh, a computer console! Let's look at aliens. A few of the Coronians above you carry out their various tasks. Talk to aliens. You know when one comes back. Oh, wait, I think I see one. Come on out. Oh, they're scared of me. The beings are busy working and have no time to chat. All right. So let's go up to the console. Let's look at cons console. 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 Yeah. The console consists of a monitor and a cartridge slot. There are also some readouts, which indicate the status of some of the mechanisms in here. Hmm. This one has a cartridge slot. Now, if I recall correctly, let's look at my inventory. Hmm, the first item in the top left says cartridge. What if I were to insert the cartridge? Hmm. Yeah, I think I shall do just that. Insert cartridge. I did it again. Cartridge! Ridge. The cartridge snaps neatly into the slot and the screen comes alive. Whosoever shall read this, my name is Dr. Slash Vohal. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcada. We have just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I have come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others. I fear that the Sarians may have learned of our mission. Dun dun dun! If my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. Da, 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 da. The Star Generator is a miraculous device. Used as intended, it will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it would cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Sarians. Encoded within this cartridge are all the plans and specifications for the construction of the Death Star. I mean, the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. Please guard this with your life. Return it to the Xenon ruling body as quickly as it is possible. As is possible. Oh, important note. The star generator is capable of self-destruction. This was introduced to the system as a precaution. To precaution? Okay. Um, to activate it, one must enter the code 6858. I'd write it down, but I'll just reference my video in the future if I need that. 6858. A five minute timer will begin to count down. Beware! Anyone within five kilometers of the star generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful and good luck. Alright. Wait, wait. The cartridge is no longer in my inventory. Take cartridge. I did it again! Cartridge! Ridge. You will wisely retrieve the cartridge from its slot. Alright. So we got the cartridge. Alright, so 
Uh, let's go ahead and look at our skimmer here. Because there's really nothing else we can do here. Look at skimmer. As described, it is a sand skimmer. And it looks like it has skimmed quite a bit of sand in its time. On it is a panel, which has a small readout. Currently dark, and a keyhole with a key in it. Hmm. Alright, well let's get in skimmer. I'm going to go ahead and save here. Um... Mm, yeah, I'll save over skimmer. All right, let's turn key. You turn the key, and suddenly the, the... I think I already read this last time. Basically, things turn on and we're about to go skimming. Woo! Now, what I'm going to do here... is I'm going to save as soon as I can. Uh... Okay, because I... Ah! Hate this part! Uh, what, at one time, I tried to do a hardcore run-through of all the Space Quest games. I was like, you know what? Screw it. No save games. Let's just go all the way through the game. Ah! Let's go through all the games. If I die once, start over at the beginning of the series. Like, it was a hardcore run. And... I didn't really have to worry, because I never made it past, I never got past this part. Uh, it was just too much of a pain, I die every single time here. I could do every other part in the entire game without dying, but this one part here is just brutal. Ah! It's not like you got a lot of time to be able to react to anything. Oh, can I type stuff? Okay. I'm just gonna try something. Look at panel. No time to talk. What? Okay. No! Stupid rocks! What kind of, like, hovercraft skimmer thing does this? It's like. Uh. Can I hide in the corner? No, I probably. I, 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 I've tried that before. Whoa! Now you'll notice up on. Uh, ah! Stop! Over on the horizon, there's uh, some little white buildings. And uh, they, they get larger as you get closer to. Mm, Yulin's Flats. I'm, I'm looking at the art right now, and I'm wondering where is Roger? Like he's looked like he's been chopped off at the like at, at the waist. His lower torso is mi ah missing. Ah! <laughs> you know what? I haven't. The, the... This part here ranks up with um, all of Castlevania, the original. Actually, you know what? The second one for the NES, for me, as far as frustration factor, this part. Uh, come on! You know, there's got to be a way to get past this, like... There's got to be a trick to it. And you know what? You'd think after all these years I would have picked up a pattern and said, Hey! I can do this! But no, no. Alright. I can do this. No! Stupid rocks! No! I'm sorry, guys. This, 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 I, I have a feeling this is what this video is going to be mostly made up of. It's going to be me screaming like a little girl. Like, no! Stop! And, and it's, it's so frustrating because you can see 
on the horizon. You can see the settlement getting closer. You're like, all right, I'm, all, I'm getting closer. I'm going to be there any second now. And then, thud, or thump, sorry. Like, your control on this thing isn't all that great either. You're like, eh. ah. I hate this game. Ah, oh, what the crap? Okay, I can do this. Focus. Focus. If you see anything, just boo it from it with your... You know, I, I believe that the two guys from Andromeda, they, they, they deliberately... That's not even fair. They, they, they put this part in the game just to torture the players. They're like, they figure, you know what? The people who are playing adventure games, they're like book nerds and stuff. They're like, no, no, these... The, they're like the people who want to read and solve puzzles. Let's throw an arcade sequence at them. That's right. Let's, let's throw something at them and let's we'll just laugh as they repeatedly just kill themselves over and over and over again. Mark, Scott, you guys are jerks. And I love you. <laughs> okay, come on. All right. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing not too bad. You know, in fact, I'm, I'm going to... Sorry, guys. Skim with two M's. Ooh. No! I figured I was doing some not, not too bad progress there. I'll... Oh, I was just going to save. No! Okay. Oh, come on! Let's see here. Let's see if I can make it. Uh, evidently, when you load your save in the middle of driving, though, you lose your damage report. All right. Um, so, I'm <laughs> what else is there to say about this part of the game? Well, um, luckily, after this sequence, after this little action sequence, um, is in my opinion, we'll say the meat of this game. Uh, like, up till now, I, f I feel like you've kind of been pressured. I'm going to actually save it here. You've kind of been pressured. Um, there's always been, like, a something. They, they've applied stress to the player up to this point. God, stop. Uh, and they, they've had you constantly on the go, right from the Arcadas. Uh, uh, imminent destruction to... Oh, come on. This is just not fair. Um, right, you know, then you got the, the, the spider droid chasing you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to lose my sanity here. Um, you know, just it's just been a constant hectic ride. Uh, and... Honestly, at, after this part here, I find that's when the actual... Um, you, you, you can actually take a... <sighs> you can take a... <laughs> you can take a breath and... and actually, um... I don't know, you start... It. There is a few parts that are actually still a little bit tense, of course, but, uh... You can relax a little bit more. What the, mm. All right, so I guess while I'm going through here, I might as well give you a little bit of backstory about uh, my history with Space Quest. Um, either that or I could fast forward this and, you know, spare you guys the, the torture. But why would I do that? If the two guys are going to torture me, I'm going to torture you. Ah! Okay. <laughs> so basically, uh, when I was a very young child, little guy, you know... 
Um, I think it was about four or five. My dad came home with a video game for the computer, and he turned it. He turned it on. Popped the disc in. Turned it on, and there, before me, I saw King's Quest Three. Okay, I'll tell the story later. Woo! That was pretty intense. You managed to successfully navigate through the treacherous boulder field. Boulder? Okay. And are quite relieved to see that you've reached the settlement. So we pull up. So after a truly stone-crushing journey, you have miraculously arrived safely in Newlands Flats. And just in time, too, because the skimmer's power cell has been drained. It will take some time to recharge itself. This place isn't quite what you had expected. It is semi-bleak at best. And it's got a little nice message down at the bottom. Welcome to Yulin's Flats. Alright, well, let's um, go ahead and save. I'm going to call this Yulin's Flats. So let's get out of skimmer. And let's... Oh, okay, there's a guy coming over here. Say, this is a genuine Fulton ska sand skimmer. I've been looking for one just uh, like it. Uh, I wonder if you would accept uh, 30 buckazoids. It's uh, evidently a Canadian alien. Uh, I'm going to say no. 30 buckazoids? No. Fine, be that way, eh? And he walks off. I don't trust the guy. I'm gonna go ahead and if we remember, there's a key in here. Let's take key. Taken. Adventure. All right, so let's let's go ahead and walk around a bit. Um, you know, naturally you'd be like, "Hey, I'm right in front of the bar," and game design says, "Hey, you know, let's let's put something interesting right in front of them," so they go ahead and check out the bar. But instead, I'm gonna go walk around everywhere else first. So this is Yulin's Flats. Um, Tiny's used spacecraft. Well, let's go ahead and talk to Tiny, who doesn't look too tiny to me. Howdy, bucko! Can I interest you in one of the finest little used spaceships in the galaxy? I have no idea what accent that was. I'm so sorry for... No, I doubt anyone in the world actually talks like that, so I, I, I can't have offended anyone. Um, you look like a man of discerning taste. Well, this is quite a unique little unit. Never been flown over Mach 3. It was owned by a little old lady from Glan Glansadrom. You have to fly it to believe it, and she can be yours for only 99 buckazoids. Alright, well, if you're trying to sell me something, maybe I'll walk over to this one. Tell me about this one. Don't let appearances fool you. This baby may be a relic. I mean a classic. But she's as dependable as the day we got her. And just think, you'll be the only one in the quadrant with one. I guarantee it. She's a beaut, ain't she? Or isn't she? This little baby can do a spin around the planet in just under an hour. Look at the lines in that bodywork. They just don't make them like this anymore. You know what I mean? And she's a real bargain at 185 buckazoids. All right, now at that point, I think that was a very horrible, horrible John Wayne kind of thing. But let's see, Tiny's gonna go ahead and follow me, so I see another ship over there. Let's take a look at this one. What about this spaceship? Well, there's a man with a good eye. This here is the keenest little scrambler in the hemisphere. Top of the line. Handles like a charm. Perfect for cruising the asteroid fields. And she's got all the thrust a guy could need. I tell ya, she's an outright steal at 214 buckazoids. Well, that's great. Um, hey, let's try this. Haggle Tiny. Make a deal with Tiny. Punch Tiny. Hit Tiny. 
enter into a physical altercation. I'm not even sure if that's the proper use of that word. With time. Uh, doesn't understand physical. All right, well, you know what? Uh, we'll forget about tiny for now. And continue moving on this way. All right, so blank screen. Um, so we, he ended up getting King's Quest three, and um, at the time, you know, they didn't really like me exposed to like the magic and stuff. This was, you know, back in the eighties, you know, well before stuff like Harry Potter and all of its controversy and stuff. So uh, they went and brought it back, and they went and got my dad went and got Space Quest. So I never got to play King's Quest 3, so that technically means that Space Quest was my first game. So anyways, we got Droids B Us here. Um, it, it actually, when I played it, I'm playing, uh, um, I apologize, I've got, I'm playing a downloaded copy, um, because my original discs actually ended up getting corrupted um, twice, because I believe we actually purchased <laughs> purchased the game. I actually ended up purchasing the game twice and even the Space Quest collection I got only has the VGA version But anyways in the original it actually said droids are us, but I believe there was a an actual legal issue uh, With toys are us giving them a bunch of grief. So they actually had to change the name to droids be us So let's go ahead and take a look inside. Oh <clears throat> Welcome to droids be us the finest emporium for mechanized beings in the quadrant. We have a complete line for droids for any purpose imaginable. Well, almost any. All top of the line, but I suppose you would probably be interested in the sale items. Please walk this way. So he's like, hey, he's gonna walk up the stairs because he just wants to show me the sale items. He looks at me and he's like, oh, you're, you're, you're poor. Well, I want to look around. So this is the inside of the droids of the droids be us. The room has a pedestal in the middle and a stairway and balcony towards the back. A variety of droids adorn the floor space. Well, let's look at droid. There's nothing I can tell you that the salesman hasn't already. Okay, so I guess as I walk over to them, they'll tell me. We call that one the peacemaker. It's used primarily in security. In a crime situation, it is capable of apprehending, trying, sentencing, and punishing the offender on the spot. Swift and effective, and only 368 bucksoids. 294 with coupon. If only I had a coupon. Look in pockets. Searching your pocket, you find zero bucksoids. Sad. All right, let's go take a look at this one. So the salesman go ahead and goes ahead and tells me that compact unit is often used for mining. It is short and stocky and quite strong for its size. It is designed to work in areas which may be hazardous to non-mechanized beings. Three hundred twenty-five buckazoids for years of service. Two hundred ninety-four with coupon. Already saw that description. Let's walk over to this other four-legged one. <clears throat> that one is a collector's item, one of the very first droids ever built. Someday that rare piece is going to bring me a small fortune at auction. It's not for sale. All right, let's go to uh, ahead and take a look at the sale items. Um, all right, let's look at this guy. That model is ideal for flight systems operations. It will pilot any modern fighter or cruiser, and it is one of the most experienced droids we carry. I ask only 45 buckazoids for it. 36 was coupon. Not too shabby. I got it, wait, I got it from some gambling type who was required to pay up or perish. Alright, let's take a look at this one here. That unit is a good all-around droid. Sure, it may seem a little dinged up, but it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, there's still quite a bit of life left uh, in it. Uh, it is a great little companion, and for you, only 40 buckazoids. 32 with coupon. Alright, well, we got some great deals here. Uh, I know that. 
Uh, I've already looked around. Uh, look at Salesman. The Salesman is a strangely built being. He looks like he might tip forward any minute. Mm. Yeah, when he was walking sideways, he looked like he was pretty front heavy. Alright, so let's go down here. Uh, I've already seen the description for that. You don't need to tell me that one again. Alright, droids BS, let's head on down. Hmm. What's this? Look around. This is the back of the bar at the southeast end of Eulens Flats. Look at ground. It's quite sandy down there. Look at, what is that, a pile? There's a strange pile of very fine white powder here. Its origin puzzles you. It has a strange burnt smell to it. Take pile. The extremely fine dust seeps between your fingers. There is no need for it anyway, especially considering its origin. But I don't know what its origin is. Actually, I do, but I'm pretending I don't. Look at bar wall. Look at wall. There's some writing on it. Right, well, it's, what's the writing say? Look at writing. It appears to be in Sarian. You're a little rusty in your Sarian, but it appears to say Xenon Bites. Well, thanks. Stupid Sarians. Alright, so now we're back here at the front of the bar. Um... Now, if we didn't take the keys and we came back, um, buddy, w uh, well, somebody would have actually stolen the skimmer. You can kind of guess who. Probably your little friend here. All right. Okay. This is my final offer. Oh, wait. Now I'm Mexican. Um, okay. I'm just going to stop doing voices. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. This is my final offer. Oh, I, yeah, blah, yeah, this is my final offer. And I'm only doing it because you look like you need it pretty bad. I'll give you 30 buckazoids, and I'll throw in this swell jetpack. I only used it once. Works great in zero gravity. You'll love it. Is it a deal? Yes or no? Well, I think about at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I'll take the jetpack. Glad we could do business. I'll just take that key. Thank you kindly. Hope you're staying in Newlands Flats is an interesting one, is an an interesting one. And with that, he drives away with your skimmer. But that's alright, let's look at Jet Pack. This is your bargain Jet Pack. Use Jet Pack. Aww, I wanted to use the Jet Pack. So disappointing. Alright, so let's go ahead and check out the inside of the bar. Oh, this sounds so much cooler on with the Tandy sound. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure I'm playing one of the later versions that was censored. Now, if you look over by the slot machine, there was an alien there. But now there's just a pile of whiteness. Which is getting cleaned up by that droid. Hmm. I wonder if that might be, you know, where that pile of back comes from. So, oh, I gave it away. Yes, it's a slot machine, not an arcade machine of some sort. But anyways, uh, I'm actually going to test something. Oh no! Okay, so every time you come in, there's a different band. I'm wondering if... Uh, give me a second, there's one I want to show. I, I don't know if it was censored out in this, uh, this version. There we go. Got some ZZ Top! Uh, for you, the... Uh, I don't know how old everyone is, but they got beards and they're, they make music and yeah. But anyways. All right, so basically we're inside the bar. So let's take a look around. 
This is a seedy little place. Galactic riffraff are seated at the bar. The bartender drops by occasionally to serve them. A band is cranking out some of the more popular tunes in the quadrant. There's a slot machine standing near the bar. You notice a sweeper in the lower corner of the room. It must get messy here. No one seems to notice or care that you've entered the bar. Sorry. So let's look at stairs. Because I noticed some writing there. There's nothing special about the stairs. They look like a standard gravity rebellion device. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that's what I'm going to start referring to them from uh, as from now on. They're no longer stairs. They are gravity rebellion devices. Look at writing. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, look at wall. The walls are sporting a wonderful smoke finish. Such that the original color is a puzzle. There are cracks here and there which attest to the state of disrepair. Alright, well... Some of the stranger galactic riffraff are seated at the bar. The bartender drops by occasionally to serve them, yeah. There seems to be a vacant spot at the right end of the bar. Well, you know what? I've got 30 buckazoids. Let's try the slot machine. So we see three skulls, and we know that the last player was kind of vaporized. So, we're not really... Oh, look, it says right there, three skulls equals death. All right, so let's go ahead and um, bet some monies. I guess we'll use... Uh, I'll go with F6. Go, eyeball! Uh, I've lost. So sorry. Uh, let's try again. Let's try F6. Aw, oh, tough luck. And this is actually another part of the game where you... So sorry. Where you end up playing the slot machine to make money. Oh, oh we got a cherry! Woo! I want my money back. <laughs> hey, I got some more money back. That's actually not too shabby. I think I'm actually going to save here. Uh, slots. Um... So, anyways, while I'm playing the slot machine to get a little bit of money, um, so I ended up playing Space Quest uh, for the first, like I said, my first game, and I used to walk around just randomly. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to write anything then. My, my parents actually had to write out a list of words of uh, how to do stuff in the game, and that, that's basically how I learned a lot of words, how to spell things, um, how to type. <laughs> um, was playing playing this game, so. It's uh, pretty special. And then, you know, a few years down the road, we ended up getting the fourth game. Um, I was in a uh, some computer store of some sort, and I was a spoiled little brat. And I was like, no, I want the Bugs Bunny game. And my dad had to remind me. He's like, hey, you remember that game you played with the, the little guy you walked around? I was like, oh, yeah, I love that game. He's like, this, you know, is like the sequel. It comes after. It's the same same thing. And he was holding the box to Space Quest 4. So we ended up getting that game. And, um, well, I'll talk about what that game once I get to it uh, in the series. But, uh, you know, it scared the crap out of me. It was pretty awesome, though. It's now my second favorite uh, in the series. I, I wonder if that's just nostalgia or just the fact that it was awesome. I don't know. But anyways, um, that's basically how I got into the Space Quest series. And then... Sometime in high school, I ended up having to actually acquire copies of... Oh, 72, nice. Um, we'll say acquire copies of number two and three. I've beaten two once. I've never actually finished three. And I've never played five or six. So I'm actually really looking forward to this full playthrough. I think what I'm going to do, though, is... Maybe for the slot machine here... 
I'm thinking I might just uh, just play on my own and then show you uh, the rest later. Because I'm sure this is going to get rather boring eventually. Suck methane. How nice of it. Oh, come on. I've ended every episode the same way. I'm looking to end it again the same way. But it won't shoot me. This game's a jerk. Alright, well, I guess I'll just have to... Oh, oh, ah. Uh... I was like, I guess I'll just have to uh, end this game not dead. Well, obviously the band changed up uh, while I uh, was playing the slot machine. I'm going to step out of the bar. Oh, look, there's a guy here. See there, pal. It's come to my attention that you are in the market for some transportation. That yeah, probably would be helpful, yeah. I may be able to help you if you'll follow me. I'd like to show you a fine little piece of machinery that'll knock your eyes out. Alright, let's follow him. Seems legit, right? A strange alien somehow knows that I'm looking for transportation. Hey, alright, leads me behind the bar. Hold it right there, pal. This is a stick-up. I'll just relieve you of your cash. Thank you very much. 59 bookzoids. I guess it's better than nothing. Here, keep five for yourself. I gotta admit, you look like you need it. Well, you've gotta be leaving now. Go straight back the way you came in. Deviate from that path, and you're a grail kibble. Well, like I said, I'd hate to disappoint you guys. So let's go ahead and step towards him. Zoip. The mugger impresses upon you that he was quite serious. Thank you for playing Space Quest, blah, 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 blah. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Next time, uh, I'll actually have spent time getting all the money on the slot machine so you don't have to sit there watching me play it the whole time. Um... I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've had playing it. And uh, like I said, if you want to want to see some more stuff from the two guys from Andromeda, go head on over to TGAKick.com um, and check out their new Kickstarter. If, like I said, you're watching this video before uh, June 12th. Uh, if not, hey, go pick up some of the, the other Space Quest games. They're on GOG.com. You can pick up one to six uh, fairly cheaply for $10. You can get the entire, entire pack. Um, all right, then. So... Uh, once again, my name's been Jason. It's been great having you as an audience, and uh, game on.